All right, guys, we made it through the Kingdom Keepers series, so you know what that means. This week, we are doing a Ranking the Kingdom Keepers series video. I know it's been a while, and there were a couple of breaks in between, but thank you guys so much for sticking around for the channel and engaging with all the videos. It really means a lot to me. It really means a lot that you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more of it. So I want to just say thank you. Thank you so much. So if you guys are new to the channel or haven't seen one of my ranking the videos, the way it's going to work is I will go through each book of the series in order of my least favorite to my favorite and give you my general reasons why I place the book where it is. As we go through book by book, I will leave links to those book videos in the corner. So if you guys want to go rewatch those videos, you can. This time around, down in the comments, if you guys have your own rankings for this series, please do not be afraid to leave them down there. I would love to hear your reasons why you rank the series as you do. As always, down in the comments, if you guys have book recommendations you want me to do in the future, please leave those down there. So I just want to add this in the very beginning of the video. If you guys are confused on what I'm talking about, about any of the book reviews, that's partly my fault. And I'm sorry. I don't have my pro and con list in my notes. I deleted it after each of the videos, which is probably an oversight on my part. So next time when I do something like this, I'll keep all the notes. So it's a bit more organized. So again, if you guys are confused, do not be afraid to rewatch those videos. I explain my thoughts a bit better in them. All right, guys, so without any further ado, let's hit the intro. So taking the number seven spot, we have Dark Passage. So if you guys watched my book review for this, you know my thoughts on it. I hate how contained this book is and just how small and limited the keepers are. They can't really do anything. They're on the ship like 99% of the book. There's only like a couple of small places they actually get off and do stuff in. And it feels weird not being at the parks after being in them for all the other books. It's still generally a good book and it's still worth the read. I just don't think it's the best book because it's so contained and with it being contained, Ridley Pearson, like I said, can only do so much and he focuses a lot more on of the emotional drama in this book and it still, it just bothers me how contained it is and how limited the keepers are. Also, like I said in that book review, I really don't like how Story Ming was particularly used. I feel like Ridley Pearson could have used her better, a lot more, and a lot more effective effectively than he did in this book. I mean, she's not a main character, but if she's gonna be part of the second generation DHI, you might as well showcase why Wayne was gonna pick her in the first place. number six spot, we have Disney at Dawn. So for this book in particular, this is the first time where we actually jump parks. And I feel like this is a really good use of the other parks. It's showing the keepers, the overtakers aren't going to just focus on the Magic Kingdom. They're going to want to expand their powers everywhere. And it's really good to see Ridley Pearson using the other parks that Disney has as backdrops for the Kingdom Keepers and their battle. So as I also said in that video, I really like the idea of the keepers having to fight off their own bodies because they can't go to sleep. If they do, they're going to get crossed over one by one and get captured. So I really feel like that's a really genius plan for the overtakers. It pushes the keepers to push themselves to get this done before they have to fall asleep, which is genius. And it's kind of fun to just see the king keepers not being able to use their DHI powers because in this book, they're at the parks as themselves. So it's kind of a different twist. Like they have to work together because they can't, you know, walk through walls. They're not holograms. And they have to avoid park security and everything from getting recognized. And it just puts a, a good level of intensity in this book. They have to get this done. They're on a time crunch and they cannot be spotted by park security. That time crunch really makes this book special. So taking number five spot, we have Disney After Dark. 
This is the first book in the series. I love it. This is the book that put me into the Kingdom Keepers. It is such a good book. The premise itself is really interesting. Kids going back and forth from the parks after they close and going on the various attractions and crazy stuff happens. It is a really good starting off point for the entire series. And I love this as the first book in the series. Only thing that drags it down slightly, at least for me, if you've watched the video, is you know, the team doesn't seem fully developed, and I get that it's the first book, but I honestly wish we'd spent a bit of time in each of the Kingdom Keepers' heads, just to get a better sense of their personalities. I get that it's the first book and he was just starting to write the characters and I'll give him some slack for that, but I still would have wanted the team to be a bit more developed as the series was starting out. fourth spot, we have Disney in Shadow. I love how we'd gone from the extreme of book two, where them, they are actually in the park in person, to book three, where they are DHI full-time in the parks. Because this is actually the first book where the Overtakers started to get a lot smarter. They'd created the second server in book two, but in book three, this is the first time where they were actually able to successfully force crossover the Kingdom Keepers. And again, this is the book where the psychological warfare starts to ratchet up a lot. The Overtakers now have a way to bring them to the parks without them even consenting to that and getting captured. So again, the psychological warfare just keeps getting piled and piled up, which is always fun. You don't want a series not to have escalation of stakes. What's the point of reading that if it doesn't get more intense? So this is the book that really started to ratchet up the stakes and it only kept getting better and better from here. The other thing I really enjoyed was seeing the parents' perspective of the Kingdom Keepers' activities. Mrs. Whitman and all the other reactions were really authentic. Like, this is how parents would probably be reacting if they saw what their kids were doing. Those reactions are really great. The only thing I wish, and this is kind of hindsight 2020, after Mrs. Whitman gets controlled by Maleficent, what if we'd seen her thought process through all that? That would have been super interesting. But obviously, we didn't get that, but that would have been, to me, really cool to see that. The only thing, like I said in my video review for this, that drags this down is, again, we use Jess's whole future vision thing to set off the plot. Again, if you were going to give Wayne the ability of foresight, and you were going to intro Wanda, why wouldn't you just use Wanda to give whatever vision Wayne had to the Keepers? That's the one thing that drags this book down. You have a way to do that without trying to replay plot points. That's all I'm saying. Why did you replay that? It just doesn't make any sense to me. <music> Taking the number three spot, we have Shell Game. I ranked this book as high as I did because the stakes just keep getting escalated. This is the first time where the Overtaker kids really become a threat when they try and poison Finn. And it is a great way to set up the stakes of this war that they're in. Like, the Overtakers are not messing around in this battle. And it is good to just see that the Overtakers are willing to do whatever it takes to win. Because of that, it forces the Keepers to be just as efficient and just ready for anything and I love that escalation of tension that this book continues throughout the entire series. So the only downside to this book is this is the first book where they go on to the cruise. Now again I am really a fan of expanding the universe but going on the cruise ship is a double-edged sword because like I said when I did my Dark Passage review this really starts to become super limiting. They go off the ship a bit more in this book but they are still super, super limited in what they can do. Again, when I did my review for this, I said Ridley Pearson should have had them just go back and forth to the base and figure out what's going on and still be able to be in the parks. And you could have a secondary location that they could go to instead of just strictly being on the ship. Again, it's super limited and just confined in for this book. And being on the cruise lines sort of loses its appeal very, very quickly. And I just don't love this book. I love the escalation of stakes, but I don't love the part where they're on the cruise ship. So taking the 
number two spot, we have Power Play. The reason I put Power Play over the other books is because this is, I think, the height of the Overtaker plan. Cross them all over, eliminate them one by one, and continue to use the Overtaker kids as sort of spies and weapons that they can use to strike both from the parks and in the outside world. Again, I think this is the best Overtaker plan that they have ever used. A strike on a double front, they can only fight at one front at once, which is why I think this is the best Overtaker plan that they had. So taking the number one spot, we have the Insider. This is the final battle. Everyone's just culminated into this one book, and it is the best of the original Kingdom Keepers books. This is the one with the highest stakes. They are about to destroy Disney. This is what everything's been leading up to, and I love this is the final escalation of stakes. This is what it's all been leading to. Also, I love Wayne's death and just how emotionally impactful it is. It is a great just tribute to a character that we had grown to love and all the characters they've grown to love. The one thing, like I said in my review, that I wish he had done, gone through each of the characters and be like, okay, how is this affecting each of them? But I know there's a time crunch. So I'm, that's just a wish he would have done, but I'm completely fine with what we've got. It still ended up being really, really good. So the ending of this book, I feel like is really, really good because even if he hadn't had the next three books planned, you could have ended this with Insider and you would have been fine. The other three books are good, but even if they didn't exist, Insider would have been a fine ending point for the series in general. And I feel like you could end the series with Insider, but he continues to keep going with it. And I always appreciate uh, that you keep going with a series that is really popular, that hasn't gotten stale. I mean, there had some low points, but it still hasn't gotten stale for me. And I hope this series just continues to be really good. Alright guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It really means a lot. Please do not be afraid to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys do not miss anything. So, down in the comments, like I said in the beginning, if you guys have your own personal order for this series, please do not be afraid to drop that down in the comments. I would love to discuss why you rank the books where you do. Also in the comments, if you guys have your own books you want me to do reviews on in the future, please do not be afraid to leave those down in the comments. So, next week's book review will be Frank Herbert's Dune. Till then guys, have a great week and don't forget, keep on reading.